it was an absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous day. Very, very beautiful day. Beautiful, bright sunshine. More like an April or May day than March. I was in bed uh, initially thinking I was going to sleep in and my father uh, came into the room, my dad, and said, uh, get up, Bink, it's time for skiing. And, uh, and off we went. It started off really up, really upbeat. My dad was in a great mood. A somewhat familiar car drove up and uh, it was my Auntie Fed. At one particular point, my father uh, went back to where my uncle lived across the road. He said, Dave, I think you should go back and I'll join you when I'm feeling better. And I thought, oh great, well, we, all, we loved Andy Fit and thought we'll have a cup of tea and then, then I'll get back to my books. And then I realized that she was crying when she got out of the car. Fitty ended up telling Dave and Art and uh, I think Sue what had happened. She broke the news to me and she was just absolutely beside herself with, um, with emotion. What I think we, we had heard at the time was that Dad had uh, been skiing with... Um, with uh, Dave, my brother Dave, and uh, Sandy, and had uh, collapsed at the bottom of the hill. And as I look back on it now, it was typical dad. He, um, he didn't want me around because I think maybe, perhaps he just had a feeling that what was coming wasn't very good and he didn't want me to see it. So uh, bless him for that. He had died at, at, near Camp Fortune and um, and we had to try to absorb that news. That was March 10th, 1962. Very well etched in most of our, all of our memories, I'm sure. Um, Dad didn't make it past about two o'clock, I think, that afternoon. Day for which nothing could repair. My broken heart, I didn't think I could repair. For on that cold white day, the selfless acts they bear. He told me, go ahead, and so I left him there. I could have been there, held his hand. Could have tried to help him stand. But instead, I walked away, and I looked my back as he stumbled. 